tight a framework as we could, right? I mean, that's it. And that's kind of my game. I mean, I've, I, I, I started out in real estate uh, in upstate New York with Century 21, became a regional director for them. Uh, they moved me to Texas, became a divisional president for them out of Dallas, saw this little company growing down in Austin. They had just reinvented then in the late 80s. And I, and I watched it because I always watch my competition. And I said, wow, if I were inventing a real estate company, it wouldn't be like this big corporate brand name one I'm with, which happens to be number one in the world at the time. It would be like this little company that Gary Keller is starting down in Austin because it's, it's dedicated to agents. Agents keep, keep most of the money provides all the training and support that the agents need uh, and then builds a profit share system into it. I went, wow, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's amazing. And, and I said, that is the future of, the real, of real estate, I think. And it was neat because four years later, I got a call from Mo Anderson saying, you know, Gary and I would love to have you on our team. We think you know more about real estate franchising than almost anyone we know. And you, we love the way you train agents and are dedicated to agents. So I got to join them and build Keller Williams University and then, write the three best-selling books in the history of real estate, which is wonderful to have done that. And that's the foundation of what I've really wanted to share with you in these times. We had, you know, getting what you want, which is the master skill of achievement in anything, is the, is the ability to plan, set clear goals, build habits, and have time blocking that gets you what you want in the time you want. And I gave the example of Gary Keller doesn't give much time, didn't give much time to real estate. He was not a workaholic. Mo Anderson was a work ethic, you know, she, she worked it and I was the creative guy. You know, I don't work long hours, but what I do, I do with focus and creativity. So we each have our different style. That was the point of that, right? And then we, we talked about why list with me and the core of a great uh, real estate career is knowing your value proposition and having the words and the ways to articulate that so people want to do business with you. I mean, it's just people don't understand how much that is the core. Because as Mike Ferry says, if you haven't mastered your listing presentation, you won't prospect. Sorry, you won't. You won't have the confidence. You won't know your value proposition. You won't go out there and do that, right? And then we had the magic comes in threes, which is really about this idea of how to divide your time up into threes. And one third of it should be training and development, what you're doing here, right? Because we, we play a very complicated sport. As if people would come up to Gary and I and they'd say, well, you know, it's not rocket science. And we go, oh, yes, it is. Real estate done at the highest level requires the knowledge and the skills and the disciplines of, of a real pro, a real master. It is rocket science. It is brain surgery. Don't dumb it down. So we talked about how you do that and how you master those fundamentals. And then as part of that, we talked about uh, really building this, this uh, tough mental set, this resilience and tenacity, because this is a a business full of a lot of failures, full of a lot of people saying no, right? On your way to getting people who say yes, deals fall through, people don't do what they say they're going to do, people don't tell you the truth. There's a lot of that that goes on, but we just have to be above it and resilient, and particularly in these times of great national fear, you know, a lot of fear based things going on. Michael Crichton wrote a wonderful book in 2004 called State of Fear. And he said, big business, big government, and big media want you to be afraid. So you'll buy their products, so you'll vote for them, and so you will listen to their media. So it, that we, we are in a fear-based economy, so we need a lot of us that are calm in the chaos, that we are really have a bigger perspective. We understand how things really work, and we don't get knocked off our pins by short-term worries and, and, and things that could, could go wrong, right? So that's that mental toughness. And then last time, we got together and talked about the Overlooked Secrets of MREA, which is the number one best-selling book in the history of real estate, known in a real estate agent. And it really is not just about building teams, although that's an ultimate choice you have if you want to truly build a business. We'll talk a little bit about that today. But it really is about, you know, doing the best you can do is what we said, you know, increasing your dollars per hour. You know, for the time I decide to devote to my real estate career and business, how can I increase my income per hour, right? What I get paid for the time I give it. And that we had a wonderful, you know, discussion about that. And then we looked at all the tools and systems of how to truly turn it into a business. Well, today is another big picture thing. How to gain financial independence, right? How to, you know, how to get passive income coming into your life. And it's not easy. 
It's not a, it's a, and I didn't learn this really for myself, even though I was a big high income earner, I really didn't learn about building wealth until I got with Keller Williams. I mean, it really was, and that was late in my career. So I was scrambling to even get to the point now, you know, where I have the level of passive income that I have in my encore years, good to have. And I, and I am blessed because I got to be with Keller Williams to, to learn how to do that. And I want to share some of that with you today. So here's the, um, Oh, when we're gonna, I know it'll, I know it'll advance sometime. All right, so here's what we know is life is a real journey. I mean, it's a, it's a blessing and it's a gift from God. It's, you know, to lead the life we lead, even with all the challenges and stuff. And our goals are to build our health, wealth, and happiness. I mean, it's that simple. Talk about magic comes in threes. Right. That is really what underpins our feeling good about our life. We have good health. We have enough money to live on and do the things we want, as Gary Keller says, to fund your mission in life. And then we have what what Martin Seligman calls authentic happiness. He wrote a powerful book. He's the founder of positive psychology uh, in the late 90s. And now that's just it's actually changed the face of psychology and how we look at things. It's looking at it from a positive point of view. And he said, authentic happiness is what we're after. Uh, and that doesn't mean a life of ease because a life of challenge well met leads to authentic happiness. A life of ease without any challenges doesn't lead to happiness. That's interesting, right? And the other side of that is, and it's what a wonderful book by Sean Acor says, called the, called the happiness advantage. Uh, and what he says is that it's not that success leads to happiness, it's that happiness leads to success. So our first goal in life is to be happy with what we have and how we are and the challenges we're facing and all of that. And when we have that positive mental attitude of happiness, it will lead to other levels of success, right? So here's, here's the things to remember. Achieving financial independence does not happen by accident. It never does. You can win the lottery maybe, but most of those people blow it away so fast. It's amazing what the research shows. It's almost like you wish you never had, right, won the lottery. So no, it, it, it takes intention, in real clear intention. And I hope today, as part of the message with you, is you get a little more intentional about looking at the, your move toward financial independence, because it's certainly not something you do overnight. Uh, and all the big issues in life really begin with your mindset. They really begin with how you think. We say in the millionaire real estate agent and the millionaire real estate investor, first you think a million, right? Then you earn a million, then you, then you own a million, then you receive a million. So uh, think that it's all about, all about getting the right fundamental actions. And then this is a lesson I learned from Floyd Wickman uh, early in my career, and it stuck with me. In fact, I'm doing a... Uh, the keynote address for a gathering that Floyd Wickman and Mike Callan, his CEO, are pulling together in the middle of June for all the realtors that are part of the, the Wickman organization. He's trained thousands of agents. And I'm calling it Magic Comes in Threes because it's honored. It's an honor of what I learned from Floyd. And this is one of them. And, he, and this is, just think about this. It's almost a, a Zen-like mantra. It's what you do when you don't have to that will determine what you become when you can no longer help it. Think about that. It's what you do when you don't have to. No one sells you, says you have to watch what you eat. No one says you have to work out. No one says you have to prospect, have to have a business plan. No one says you have to make investments, save money and make investments. No one's, no one's regulating that, but it will determine what you become, how healthy, wealthy, and happy you are, right? If you do the right things now. So that's where you kind of get this wisdom and Stephen Covey calls it the quadrant two focus. And I wanna take a minute there. This is kind of almost a time management seminar. It comes out of his seven habits of highly effective people, but then he wrote a, a follow-up book that was called um, uh, First Things First. And it was really about the key of doing really effective time management, how you use your time. And what he says is there are four quadrants. There are four quadrants in terms of your life and your activities. Um, it's, each activity is either urgent or not urgent. And it's either important or not important. And if you set up this kind of matrix, you get a vision of what that means, right? And so, for example, 
he, and then he numbers them. So things that are urgent and important are quadrant one. Things that are important but not urgent are quadrant two. And things that are urgent but not important, social media, getting back to emails, all that stuff, you know, uh, that's, that's a, a three. And then quadrant four is not urgent, not important, right? It's kind of like irrelevant, but you spend time there. And so it's, it's an interesting way to look at it. And he said, life is, you succeed in life the more you operate in quadrant two. The more you can take your urgent stuff and move it in a planful way to quadrant two, where you're, you, you're setting aside time for it and you're not in that emergency situation and putting out the fires and all that, that's better. And if you can avoid getting your time stuck in the quadrant three, which is the easy one to get stuck in, then you, you can move that up by, by delegating or getting very disciplined about doing first things first. That puts you in quadrant two. So let's take a look at what he means. I, I say quadrant one is putting out fires. It's a fire, you gotta put it out. <laughs> you know, it's urgent. It has all that sense of it. Quadrant three, we'll go down there first, uh, is spinning wheels. You know, it's like busy, 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 no, but no progress. Right, it's that day of feeling like, man, I was just working hard all day, but what, did, what happened? You know, what, how did I get, what happened to the day? I don't see the progress. And then the fourth one is, of course, killing time, right? It's not important. It's not urgent. It's just killing time. You just, you know, Clint Black wrote a song about that. By the way, the second song he wrote five years later was No Time to Kill. And I really, if you want to understand time management, go get the words to both of those songs. I did it. If I do a time management seminar, I actually read the words to both songs because the attitude of killing time is like, you know, I'll be killing time for eternity right after I'm gone. And then the, no time to kill is, man, if nobody looks at the future for you, who will? Right. If you don't do it, who will? It's a it's a powerful song, actually, interestingly, from a motivational point of view, educational. It's a country western song, but it it's really it's really very wise um, as as Dick knows, because he writes country Western songs, you know, <laughs> I mean, he has the best titled songs. He ought to be working in some studio somewhere, just titling people's songs, right? They would be bestsellers for sure, right there. <laughs> they probably already have. I tried to work with Brandon, but he didn't keep it. He didn't, yeah? <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but he's kind of new age, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, okay, so. So anyway, then, then we get in the one, the one that matters, rubber on the road, putting rubber on the road, making time, going, making, going distance, right? Making that, making that car move. Uh, so that's the kind of the, to me, that's sort of the, the way I look at it psychologically. Putting out fires, easy to spend our time there, and it's men, it's full of stress. Easy to spin wheels and be busy, 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 but not productive. And then I call it the, the one four dance, right? One is the upper left, lows, and that is, we burn, we, 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 we uh, go chaos, 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 stress, 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 crash. You know, now we're into addictions and, you know, you know, binging on Netflix and all of that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So what's that mean? Well, it means that obviously the, the you know, the deadlines, emergencies and recovering from problems, you have to do, you have to do it. But that's what quadrant one feels like. And it is full of stress. Quadrant three is full of busyness social media, emails, paperwork, interruptions, but it doesn't feel like you're making progress, right? Often you're, as somebody once said, if you don't have your own plan, you'll be part of somebody else's. Well, quadrant three is being part of everybody else's plan, right? Saying yes to everybody else, but not to yourself. And then quadrant three is all the escapes, addictions, and procrastinations. You know, just activities we do to put things off and pretend we don't have to do them and avoid the stress or avoid the challenge or avoid the fear. That's a fear zone. Quadrant four is a fear zone. Fear drives you to number, fear drives you to number four. And then, but here's the thing. Here's the ones that are up here. Planning, training, investing. See, it wasn't convenient for you to be here today, whether you're online with us or you're here in this room with us. It wasn't convenient. You have a ton of other things to do that feel urgent and important, but you go, you know, this is the one chance I get to hear Dave talk about the big picture of building financial in achieving financial independence. So I should take time to do it. And as Dick and I know, the highest achievers we know are learning based. They take time out of their schedule to go learn, learn information, knowledge, 
learn, build skills, how to do things, and learn how to improve their attitudes so that they approach life kind of with the right mindset. There's just something about that mindset that matters. And of course, as you see, investing. So we're talking here, the, the only way you get to financial independence, right? It's doing the things you don't have to in order to get to where you want to go when you can no longer help it. And that's it with money. So it's investing. So I want to kind of get the perspective of where we are trying to spend our time from this idea of ach achieving financial independence. We're trying to go up into quadrant two. Now, here's the, here's the thing I would say to you. Um, first of all, be a student of the wealth building game. Uh, I've got a, a list of the 10 best books I've found on wealth building. I'll send that to you. Anyone who, just like we did in the previous ones, if you send me an email, dave at kw.com, dave at kw.com, I'll send you all the slides, plus I'll send you my top 10 list of um, best books on wealth building that I have found that have impacted me, and then also a detailed outline of MREI, which I'm going to just show you in just a second. And that's the first thing. Become a student of MREI. And not because it's about real investing in real estate. You may or may not do that, although here you are. You're in the real estate business. Your wealth building ought to come out of the real estate business, either by building a business, we'll talk about that later, or investing in income producing property. It's the greatest opportunity. It's why we wrote the book. The first book we wrote was MREA, How to Turn Your Real Estate Job into a Business and then take it to what we call the seventh level where you're the owner of that business and everyone else is doing some piece of it under your vision, under your supervision, under your accountability, that's MREA. But MREI says, how can you take your money and get your money to work for you? And how can you do it in real estate? What's the way? So I wanna take just a second and we're gonna, we're gonna switch over Lori to the, the guide because the third thing I'll send you uh, is, the um, is a detailed outline of what I call the magical pages of MREI, right? Because there's a lot in that book. But the first thing I want to say is, and I said it in that thing, is that the, that the first 150 pages are uh, the first 150 pages are really one of the best things ever written on financial wealth building. They just are that first 150 pages. I paid all my grandkids. $500 to read that first 150 pages and give them, <laughs> I did each, I paid them each 500. Th that was their scholarship. They had to read it and they had to do a book report to me. And if I felt they had skimmed it, I said, sorry, don't qualify, go back, redo it, right? Held them accountable because I figured it's not taught in our school system, financial independence and, fin and how money works and you know how to make that work isn't taught. And so I wanted them to have that foundation. So I would highly recommend that, by the way, is that you just give this to a friend and say, by the way, it's all about real estate at the end, but the first 150 pages is about financial independence and wealth building. And it really is. So what I want to do in this outline is show you. So the, so the first thing is that, that the table of contents is really good because it really gives you the dashboard, the whole book. We, with MREA and MREI, we wanted everyone to see what was in the book right up front. So we made a four page detailed outline of everything in the book. And in a sense, you get the whole picture of the book in one four page scan. And I'm a believer in scanning. I believe as a, as a fast moving entrepreneur, I'm better off scanning things than I am trying to read them in depth, right? If I'm a scholar, I read them in depth. If I'm a, an entrepreneur, I scan. Then I, if I find something that's really valuable and interesting, then I'll dive into it. And I kind of want to guide you to that in this book, but I would have it on my desk. As I said, in MREA, I would have, in, um, in Magic Comes in Threes, I would have uh, the book MREA and Shift next to each other on my desk as my, as my dashboard for my real estate production business. And then over here on the right, I'd have MREI about my future and looking at financial independence. So, Table of contents, number one. Uh, the next area, uh, the three areas of focus, criteria, terms, and network. Just like we said in, in MREA, it's leads, listings, and leverage. Well, in investing, it's criteria, terms, and network. What do I want to buy? That's my criteria. What am I looking for? How am I going to buy it? That's the terms. And who's going to help me? That's my network. 
And all this is made very clear in there, how those three elements come together to get you where you want to go. And then the, the, the two goals, net worth and cash flow. You're, you're going after both net worth and cash flow. First net worth and then ultimately cash flow, particularly passive income cash flow, right? Not just the cash flow of, say, covering your investment, like when you invest in a property and then you charge rents and you want that to cover your um, your your mortgage and your uh, and your and your carrying expenses, your maintenance and all of that. And so what's what's uh, what's interesting about that is that that um, uh, if just make this note to yourself, if you if you invested in a real estate property and put 20 percent down on it and you put a 15 year note on it, a 15 year mortgage, and at the end of 15 years, it hadn't appreciated one dollar. And you hadn't cash flowed any positive number, right? Now you broke even, basically. You still would have been making 11% a year on your money. Wow. Write that down. Get that clear. Say to people, you know what? It's, we do, we, investing in real estate is not just about appreciation. And it's not just about charging rents. So you get this massive cash flow. It's about building an, a net worth asset. And if you put 20% down in 15 years, you will make a, an average of 11% a year. And where can you go and get 11% a year on your money? Nowhere. Nowhere. Not even the stock market, even if you're good in the stock market, maybe six, 7% or something, right? And so the, the thing, the reason we focus so much on real estate and, and on business ownership is that's where the big return is. Now, if you get appreciation, as we at normally, the normal 4% a year appreciation, which the, the long-term track is that we dip down from it. We bubbled up before it in 2005, six, we dropped down below it in 2008 to 2010. And now we're back up at it, right? If you took that from after World War II, you took a 4% line, we we're right back on it, right? Everyone says, well, yeah, the market's hot now. Well, yeah, it is, but it's also recorrecting back to where the long-term path of real estate is. Now, will it bubble again? Of course, it go, real estate goes up and down maybe hopefully not as dramatically as it did last time. But the understanding is that you're going after net worth and cash flow. That's what you're really working on. Now, um, so your potential as an investor, if you look at page uh, 59, is about your ability, time, and money. So that's what you, that, those are your three assets. It's important to understand. Number one asset I have is my ability, my wisdom and my willingness and my skill at doing anything. Number two is it's the time I devote to it. And three is it's the money I have to invest, the money I have to get it working for me. So then uh, the money matrix, it, page 89, is all about getting money to work for you. And that's really what the game is. You work for money, you earn it. Then you want money to work for you, grow without you having to do anything. And that money net worth or cash flow grows. Now, the fun thing is uh, we, we have a couple of little... Uh, let me just get this. Um, we call real estate the most able investment. And it's really kind of fun on page uh, uh, 99 because we say it's the most able investment because it's accessible. Anyone can buy it. It's appreciable. It increases in value over time. It's leverageable. You buy on a margin and get growth on the, on the asset. It's rentable, cash flow, cash flow. It's improvable. Sweat equity, you can make it worth more just by your own uh, uh, endeavors. It's deductible, depreciable, and deferrable. <laughs> you have great tax advantages in that. It's stable, even over a long time. Real estate values can go up and down, but they don't tend to go up and down very much. We had one experience of them coming down severely, right? One in 50 years. And, uh, you know, so, but it's still, it still doesn't go to zero. This is important to understand. You invest in real estate, it doesn't go to zero and you don't go bankrupt unless you've over leveraged yourself. And that's a different that's a different issue. Right. And it's livable. In other words, you can you can live in it and you can then, you know, move on to the next one and keep the one that you had as an investment. So all of those things are really important you know, to remember. And the, the book just makes that just so clear. Um, and then uh, there's about the net worth. Now, make a note to yourself. We said this earlier uh, in our last session, but what you track improves. And Gary Keller believes everyone should be tracking their net worth on a, on a monthly basis. 
what I own minus what I owe. So it's the value of anything I own, an asset, minus what I owe on that. That's your net worth. And by the way, that number is worth, what we, what we say is, and we said it before, what you track improves. What you keep track of and pay attention to improves, whether that's your uh, sales calls, your transactions, your conversion ratio, the percent of listings that sell, all that stuff, whatever you track improves. And so, um, so it, and it doesn't matter if it starts negative. I told the story before, and I'll say it briefly. When Mo Anderson became CEO of Keller Williams, she and her husband owed over $900,000, almost a million dollars. They had lost that in the, the crash of the real estate and savings and loans and, and oil uh, market in Oklahoma. And Gary said, you need to track your net worth, Mo. And she, he, he said, she said, well, Gary, it's really negative. I don't even want to pay attention to it. And he went, no, you keep track of it because it'll improve. So she started to. And I remember her coming to me and saying, Dave, I only owe half a million dollars. We're really making progress. And then she said, we only owe 100000 And we had a big celebration the day she went to zero. We're celebrating Mo Anderson's net worth of zero, right? <laughs> well, because it was progress, right? Now, of course, she's a multimillionaire, right? But she, because she kept track of that and wealth building was a big deal for her. And then the other thing I just want to highlight is page 154 shows you the 20 year path to becoming a real estate investor millionaire. If you buy a property every two years for five years or for 10 years, and then one property a year for five years, in 20 years, you'll be uh, about a 1.7 million millionaire, right? Not counting the fact that it's still growing, even right then. And it will only have cost you about, in, jet, in total, about $300,000 to, to have gotten that because your later investments come from the, the equity of your current investments, right? Once you get to a certain point of equity, we call it, it's the 40-60 ratio. You might uh, don't mention it here, but it's the 40-60 ratio. What we found with millionaire investors is that they like to keep their, their leverage between 40 and 60% that they owe between 40 and 60% on the properties that they have, right? So what happens is when they're, when they, when the, the, uh, when the, uh, the debt on the property comes down to 40% of its worth of its value, then they take out that equity and reinvest it in another property. Cause what you find happening is at the early stage of investing, you'll get about a 20% return annually on your money. And the more you build up the equity of it, the more it drops down toward that 11% I was telling you about, right? Down toward 12. So what they want to do is crank up the return on their money. They don't want to be over leveraged. That's why they don't go way up at 100% or 80%. They want to keep it, you know, not above 60 and not under 40. Does that make sense? So because what they're doing is trying to get to that 20-year uh, path of being a millionaire real estate investor. So the, 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 the motto we use is buy it right, pay it down, pay it off. Buy it right, be careful going in, you make your money going in. And in every market, there's investment opportunities, even in this one. There are, there's troubled properties, there's properties that don't hit the market, there's people that are upside down, there's people that have personal uh, situations where they need the money fast. And you just need to have your eye open for those. And that's part of the search. All right, we're going to go back to the other. So those first 150 pages, I, I outline on here some more pages, but and those are, those are kind of worth paying attention to. But I'll send that to you uh, if you send me your three ahas. All right, so that's, that's phase one. Phase one is master MREI, not just from a real estate point of view, but from a wealth building point of view. Learn those principles and the language of wealth building, right? Uh, now, number two, do what, Mo, do what Mo did. And Gary says, track your net worth. Just keep track of it. And there's an easy form in the book. And if you go to uh, MREI, if you go to Keller Inc, I -N -K .com, and you look up millionaire real estate investor, there's a whole bunch of free downloads. You can run investor seminars. It gives you the outline for that, the marketing material, the PowerPoint, everything to do uh, investor seminars. And by the way, uh, Jim Reitzel up in, uh, in Canada, uh, in, um, 
just in an area just sort of south uh, west of Toronto. Uh, he and his son do one every month and have now for probably over since the book came out, so over 15 years. And he said, Dave, not only has it brought us new investors and money, but it's brought us a higher average sale price for our clients. Because as we attract investors to us, they can afford more, more expensive homes. So now our average sale price, even on our residential resale, not on the investment side, is higher. So he said, it just raises your whole game to another level when you become the local expert uh, in that. Whoops. We probably don't want to restart it right now, huh? You want me to? Okay. Uh, so so what the, what's also in that free downloadable are some really nice, big, full-size sheets to, to track your net worth and to do the next thing, which is, oops, you know what? When, there we go. Um, uh, and that is have a budget and a plan. So that's, it's like, and nothing happens accidentally. So the key about money is you got to know where it's going. You got to plan for where it's going. You got to keep track of where it's going. So have a budget and a plan. There's a real nice simplified way. By the way, I believe a lot of the record keeping, whether it's your productivity in real estate or it's building your, your net worth, you keep the tracking system simple. Begin with simple, right? Just begin with simple. Revenue versus expenses, like in your real estate business. Or in this one, assets I own, a, a ballpark figure of what they're worth, what I owe, you know, pretty clear on that, including my car and any other assets I have. You know, I'm going to just keep track of that. Have a budget and a plan. Uh, then, now here's the big one. Put a star by this. Live on 70%, invest 30. That is the Gary Keller model. He said, Dave, it's so important. He said, it, whatever you earn, it doesn't matter. Limit your, limit your living to 70% of that. And yeah, there's lots of other ways to spend it and higher lifestyles and more expensive homes and clothes and cars and all that stuff. We're a consumer-oriented society. That's nothing wrong with that, except that you don't want to get caught up in it because then it not only takes you to 100% of what you're earning, but for some people more than that, you know, and we get into debt. So if you, if you can just build that sense, because what Gary says, and I believe he's really right, if you will live on 70% of your income and invest the 30%, there will be a day when your passive income will far exceed anything you've ever earned. It's, and it's that small a percentage. He did that. I remember that he lived in this house for such a long time, even when, he, when Keller Williams was making him a lot of money and all that. He did not go to his dream house till probably 10 years after he could have afforded it. Um, and Mo Anderson made him get a new car because she came as president. And she said, you cannot pick up people in the airport in your Ford Escort. I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're supposed to be this big time real estate. So he finally had to buy you know, a better car. But he was just trying to keep it all down. And but what you learn from another book, The Millionaire Next Door, which is one on my list of top 10, is exactly that. You know, it's the, it's the millionaire driving around in his pickup truck, truck with his coveralls on, right? It's just, you know. So the point is, whatever that means for you, if you can follow that and first you save it and then you invest it, right? First you get that money out where you don't touch it and you just put it in places you can't touch and know it's not going to make a lot of money. But then you're going to get to the time where you can. And the question is, where do I invest it? And, and there's one of, we, we say it in there about active versus passive investment. It's ownership. Ownership of real estate or ownership of a business. And we're going to, it's ownership. Ownership is where wealth is made, right? Not investing in like stocks and bonds and all that. That, that can make money grow. It's okay when it, from the point of view of a savings, but not from the point of view of wealth building. All right, we're going to look at that in more detail. And then understand the difference between active and passive investment. Passive investing is like buying a, a, a stock that's passive uh, or a mutual fund or savings account. All of that's passive. Someone else is deciding what to do with the money, right? You may be lending it to them, but they're deciding what to do with it. Active investing is where you are in control of what happens to that money or the asset that you are investing in. Uh, and then let money work for you. I mean, that's the game. The game is to get that money over there. And what we say in there, make sure that your money is being paid a good salary. In other words, keep track of how much return you're getting on that money you've put in so that you can say, oh, my money today, my money over here is earning me 
6% a year. Okay, great. Now it's earning me 12% a year. Oh, wow, that's even better. Oh, wow. Now that I've really mastered this, it's earning me over 20, 25% a year. Right. And now, so you just keep track of it. And then you have the wisdom to know where you want your money working for you. Now, I want to go big picture for a little bit with me, if you'll, if, you'll, if you'll stay with me, because I think it's important to understand that you want to be in an environment that supports your wealth building goals. And Keller Williams is the best environment ever invented for supporting your wealth building goals. And you have here with Mike and Dick, two of the finest wealth building uh, experts in the, in, the, in, in the business in the world. They get passive income. They have built passive income. And, and when Mike or Dick teach a session on that, go listen to it because they really have the details of it and they know how to do it. But they're also guys who got the wisdom of Keller Williams and why Keller Williams is a wealth building company. And I want us all to understand that because we can get fooled by others who are pretending to be wealth building companies, but they aren't because they're not building something that is sustainable and reliable and based on fundamental business truths. Okay, it just, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of people out there trying to buy agents or trying to convince them that some sort of short-term thing is going to be really exciting for them. And you have to be careful of that. I'm not, not gonna talk specifically about anybody. I could, but uh, I mean, cause there's several who are in that game now of trying to convince agents that, that they have a better financial deal. And I want you to understand there is no better financial deal than right here where you are. Because let me show you, it all starts with the most business savvy economic model in real estate. And one of the reasons I joined Gary and Mo back 25 years ago was because I understood that they understood real estate and they understood money and they understood the, the, the challenges and the, the focus of the real estate agent, right? If you want to have a company truly built on helping agents achieve their goal, then that's what you want. That's what that would take you to the top of the industry. And we wanted in in the late 90s, you said, to be the real estate company of choice for the best agents, the best owners like Dick and Mike, uh, and the best clients, clients who want to work with a company where there's a credibility and and the owners are there with them and there's brokerage and people are really understanding the, qu the quality control uh, that is in a business where quality control is very difficult because we're a business of independent contractors and building a, an assurance of quality isn't easy for the consumer. So it all starts here. So let's just kind of take a quick look. Here's what makes Keller Williams so powerful. The money goes to all the right people. I could see this right at the beginning. Last year, 87.5% of the commissions went to agents. Of all the money that came into Keller Williams, almost 88% was just immediately kept by the agent. There's no other company that is close to that. No, I mean, there's splits and there's all that. And you can look at little individual circumstances and say, well, that looks good. But no, from a company point of view, there is no company where the agent keeps more of the money in the business, not even close. Because most of the, the top 500 of, um, uh, of um, uh, oh, try, what's the name of the real trends? Real trends, real trends, top 500. You know, their average is around, that the, that the agents keep around 70%, okay, 68, 70%. Uh, and that's all these other big companies. So Keller Williams, number two is the, the world's greatest real estate company, 40% larger than any other one, runs on 2.2% of the money. Astounding, astounding that you would build with all the technology and all of the support systems and, and all of the strength and power that's there that you could do that and its regions, not just Keller Williams International, but its regions, which the way it's organized is all supported to make powerful market centers supporting powerful agents. So only 2.2, which means that the market center, this business that Dick and Mike run, runs on 10%, which is amazing because the average, when I was in the business, we tried to get the company dollar for my Century 21 franchisees to be 35 to 40%. 35 to 40%. And a lot of those offices still try and keep that ratio. Here, we run it on 10 and then we deliver all the services, but we still hold our expenses to 6.9, which means that 98% of Keller Williams offices are profitable. 
which is an amazing thing to say for a national franchise system. I promise you that's been around as long to have to have virtually 100 percent of your office is profitable is an amazing accomplishment. And on average, 3.4 percent of that. And they, meaning the system, shares over almost half of that profit back to its agents in the pro in the profit share system. We're going to take a, a closer look at that because that is a wealth building opportunity that sneaks up on you right, of, of its value. And uh, those are all two, 2020 numbers, so the end of last year. And uh, it, we profit shared last year 168.2 million. And here's an interesting number. From the beginning, Keller Williams has profit shared one and a half billion dollars. There is no profit share system of any industry in any part of the world that has shared with its people I didn't want to call it employees, but we don't call our agents employees. But in a sense, if you the ones who are doing the work that profit that shares back with them $1.5 billion doesn't happen. So I want you to have a sense of identity and pride and understand this is a wealth building company, not for itself, but for its people. Right? We say careers worth having, businesses worth owning, and lives worth living. That that's the three-part fundamental you know, vision of Keller Williams. Uh, so how profit share works, we know it, but I just wanna make sure we understand it. So market centers recruit people because you cannot be in business unless you have great people, right? And they have to be great. As a, one of my mentors once said, I think I shared this last time, you can't carve rotten wood. You can't carve rotten wood. So we gotta recruit real hardwood people that can get it done in a really difficult uh, business like this. And then ge agents generate commissions of which they keep most of it. The market center earns a company dollar, that's its revenue. It pays its expenses from those. And then it profit, profit is the amount left and profit is paid into a pool nationally. So even though Dick and, uh, uh, and uh, Mike are taking all the risk, all, every Keller Williams market center owner is taking all the risk, has all the liability. In the end of the day, when they make a profit, they have to share virtually 50% of it back to the system, many of whom will not be people that are in their, in their market center, right? Because it's a system-wide basis. I, my profit share tree covers the whole country and Canada, right? It just does. It's people everywhere, even though I only sponsored people mostly in Texas and Oklahoma and, uh, and in uh, New England. So anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. And then the profit share is distributed directly, directly to the agents on the 21st of the month. And this is important because Keller Williams is not managing the money. Keller Williams is not building a, a profit sharing system where they manage the money and then they get to keep a part of it. And then, you know, and it gets delayed. No, it comes straight to us as agents and people. And then we can do what we want. If we want to tax defer it, we can do that. Right. If we want to put it in a tax deferred IRA, we can do that. If we want to spend it, we can do that. If we want to invest it in real estate, we can do that. So the thing is, it's important to understand how how cleanly, how cleanly this is built. Now, why is the Keller Williams economic model so intelligent? Let's just remind ourselves. Agents keep most of the money. That's where it starts. This is an agent driven business. The agents get the biggest reward. They do the work. They keep the money. The market center is large enough. That's an important thing. See, a lot of other systems thought they were franchise systems like Century 21 and Remax, and they opened offices on every corner. And then there's no way that those owners could be substantial, earn a profit and deliver services to their people because it was all divvied up. Whereas in Keller Williams, we're so disciplined. We only have 800 market centers across all of North America and a few others now in other countries. But the point is that discipline has allowed us to have offices that have 200, 300, 400 people, and therefore all of the resources and all of the intelligence and all of the sharing and all of the leadership, the great people, the staffing that you have to provide all the services that agents need to be successful, including a facility and with a training area like this. And then market centers still, in spite of all that, be, by the way, when here's, you talk about what, what you keep track of improves. You know what the secret in Keller Williams is compared to any other national company? We track profit. Every month, our offices have to transmit on a proprietary software system all of their production and financial information. Therefore, 
after 30, 25 years, we have all this information on what makes an office profitable, what makes it successful. And we can use that to feed back our training and support and coaching of those offices and owners, particularly new people that join us. You understand the importance of that? Because we track it, it improves. That's a big deal. So what's, what's interesting about Keller Williams is it, it practices what it teaches. It just doesn't say, oh, agents, here's how you should run your business and then we'll run it our corporate way. No, it says, this is how you run a successful business. Oh, and by the way, that's how we run it, right? So it's just important to understand that, that, that you're part of that wisdom. And then the profit is large enough that we can share 45% of it. And that passive income goes on for life. And that's an important thing to compare to anybody else. I just wanted you to say that say they're sharing either revenue or profit. What you'll find in all of those, it erodes. The minute you stop producing, it's gone. If you don't have a really wide group of people that you've sponsored, it's gone, right? And when you retire, it's gone. <laughs> but in Keller Williams, it doesn't evaporate. It doesn't go. I'm vested. My, myself and my estate, I'm going to tell you a little bit there later, will receive profit share for as long as there's profit share. Right, it is a true asset, and that's important because no no one else is designed that way, right? And we even have this holistic nature that when somebody drops out of our profit share tree, everyone moves up, right? So I don't have like what we what we what we call Swiss cheese. My tree is not like Swiss cheese with a bunch of non-productive holes in it, right? Because when people leave, everyone moves up, so we're always filling in the cheese. And, and therefore, it's it just it, there's some uh, the reason I share this with you is there are these little quirks and interesting things that are so revealing of the intelligence of this company. You know, it's like they're not out there. We're not marketing it. I remember I had a guy, Mike Netzel. You, you know, Mike, don't you in Pittsburgh? So Mike Netzel came up to me after he'd been in Keller Williams. He was from, from Remax before and one of our pioneers in Pittsburgh. And after about 10 years, he came up to me and said, Dave, you know, it's amazing. He said. The closer you get to Keller Williams, the better it looks. He said, so many other things make a good first impression. And then when you get close, you see the dirty laundry and you see the cracks and the, you know, but he said, not Keller Williams, the closer you get and the more you understand it, the more, the more it, 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 it impresses you anyway, just interesting. So here's the thing I just want to do what Dick and I have done, but I want you to understand it really briefly. It, when we have a three-day franchise systems orientation, we teach people how to run a great Keller Williams office. And what makes us superior to any other real estate company is we have seven original and now nine models that, that are better than any other real estate company. No one comes close to us in any of these models. One is first the economic profit sharing model, right? Because we share more money, our agents keep more money than any other company. So we've mastered the, the money side of it. Number two is we understand real estate. We wrote the books. We teach it. We know, we know real estate productivity better than anyone else. There's no new agent training program better than Ignite. There's no advanced program better than Bold. There's no better training on building a business than MREA, right? There's no one better than on, on building a, a, a real estate investment practice than MREI. We are masters of the real estate game. We care more about real estate than anything else. Everyone in Keller Williams is, is a real estate professional, right? Not, not a corporate executive. Number two is we, we understand the power of leadership. We let our agents share in the leadership through our agent leadership councils all the way up to the International Agent Leadership Council. We don't make any big decisions without checking in with our agent partners. That's a big deal. But also we build leaders. We build team leaders. We build MCAs. We build... Uh, OPs, we, we get leadership and, and we have attracted, we, we have better leaders at, the, at all levels of Kelly Williams than any other real estate company by far. You could, go, you could go measure it, talk to them, and you'd understand how true that is. We have a recruiting model because every company that's going to succeed has to grow. Just like lead generation is your game, right? If you don't play lead generation, you don't play real estate, not at a high level. So just like you need to master lead generation, Keller Williams needs to master recruiting, attracting to it and retaining the best agents in the business. And so we're good at it. Why? Because we team up with our agents. 
We say you, it's your relationships that matter, not ours. It's not a marketing game. It's a relationship game. And people will join us because of you, not us. And we'll reward you for that. That's what the, and then we have a learning-based educational model. We were, we were ranked. This is interesting. A lot of people don't know this because we don't brag about things. It's interesting. Kel Williams doesn't brag about things very well. Um, I think we just go do them. But here's the thing. We, we applied to Training Magazine. They do a, a, a top 125 every year, the 125 best training companies in the world. The companies, they're not in the training business. They're in a business, but they have the best training. And we applied the first year, we were number 46, then we went into the top 10. And then for three years in a row, we were second, we were first, second, and first again. Of all companies in all industries, not just real estate. I mean, it's astounding when you think about that. We, and so we're now in the Training Magazine Hall of Fame. We're there, why? Because we have such a, an, a massive commitment to training and personal development. We just do it, we believe in it for our people and we deliver it. Uh, at, at the highest level. And then we, a little number secret for us is number six. We understand personal achievement. We understand productivity and accountability better than anyone else. We understand how as an independent contractor, you increase your productivity and how you use accountability to do that, right? It's, a, it, it's one of those things that other people just don't get. We get, and then finally we have a great culture and it's a combination culture. It's a two-sided culture. It's a values-based culture, the Y4C2Ts, how we treat each other, and KW cares. So it's a values-based, and it's an achievement focus, the six personal perspectives and all the things that we do on accountability, right? We know how to be productive, not just how to be good with each other, but then how to, not just how to be good, but how to do good, right? It's that kind of thing. And then finally, the last two we've added uh, is really the, the technology side, which is just we're going through all the learning curve you have to do to do that, but making the big investment in it. And we have and will have for sure the best, the best technology system in the industry. And then just this whole stuff going on with KWX where we're bringing in the ancillary services in a way that serves our agents, not serves anyone else, but serves our agents, makes it easier for you to do transactions. So anyway, and then it's underpinned by a philosophy of MVP and the Y4C2Ts and the six personal perspectives. So anyway, in short form, what Dick, what Dick and I do in three days, you just got in 10 minutes or 12 or whatever it was. So, yeah, but that's okay. Our brokers are slow learners, okay? You guys are fast enough to get this right away. They take a little more work, all right? So here's the thing. Now let's take your personal pathway. This is now, now we've gone to the big picture because I wanted you to understand the environment you're in. This is important to me. I love Keller Williams. I love how it's built. I love what it stands for. I love the people that are in it. I love the way we treat each other and I love what we're accomplishing together. So I, you can tell I have a passion for that, not just because I was a part of the early days, but because I've just watched it even get better and better. But now I want to go back to your own personal way. The number one is remember what we said, take it down to yourself, become a master of MREI, not just for the real estate part of it, but for the wealth building part of it. Send your message, Dave at KW.com to me. Give me your, give me three ahas from this session and I'll send you my 10 best books on wealth building as well as that detailed outline of, of MRE, MREI and all these slides. Um, track your net worth, because what you, what you track improves. Uh, have a budget and a plan, live on 70%, invest 30%. Uh, understand uh, active versus passive. If you want active investments, that's where wealth is built and let your money work for you. Right. Okay. So those are the fundamentals. Now you have several long-term income opportunities right now in Keller Williams, in your, in the business, you've chosen to be a real estate professional. So use this as the foundation. Number one is go earn a lot of money. No, that's number one. Go follow what we taught in, in why list with me and the magic comes in threes and, and uh, the overlooked secrets of MREA and getting what you want. Use those fundamentals to absolutely crank up your real estate business where you are making a lot of money. So the first thing you do is you, ha you have to earn money, no question, before you can invest it. Then live on 70% of it, invest the 30%, probably in real estate, but there's some other places you could. Here's the second big opportunity, build a seventh level MREA business, right? And really understand that that seventh level is, I, I like to tell the story of Linda McKissick, of course, up here in Denton, who, 
was failing out of real estate in 90, 1991 and then got the vision from Gary and me about this. And then she began to build it. And in 1999, her business, the McKissick Group, Our Systems Are Your Solution, did 352 closed sales. She had four admins, five uh, buyer specialists, two listing specialists, and a manager. She wasn't even managing it. She was its owner. That We call that seventh level. She built it over time with her quality, her standards, her local reputation, her staffing, her systems. That's what we teach in MREA. But she was its owner. So she's making $400,000 a year, putting in five hours a week, 40 weeks a year, 200 hours basically in the business, making $400,000. How many people would like to be part of that program, right? <laughs> raise your hand or careful, you're telling your brain something else, okay? If you don't raise your hand, you're saying, no, I'm not interested in that, Dave, okay. Just wanna be sure. So that's, that's a second opportunity and it's a big one and it's one that we support. And you can even take that to expansion if you wanna do that, like a Ben Kinney or others. A few people have taken it or sometimes they'll do markets of convenience where they have a Northern market and a, and a Southern market, a Florida market or something where they spend, you know, focus one time in the, in the summer of the year and the other time in the winter. But however you do it, you can be in multiple locations. Keller Williams teaches that too. We've taught expansion and supported it. Number two is you can become a personal uh, investor in real estate. You really can look around for those opportunities, really master those opportunities, decide what part of it you want, sweat equity, property management, maybe not, maybe just investing. OK, become or you can make that, like I said, with Jim Reitzel, a part of your business. Make it part of your business. Become an investor's real estate agent. Do a monthly inv investment seminar. And by the way, like I say, all those materials are already free for you to download from Keller Inc. And you can have the flyers, you can have the handout materials you can have the PowerPoint and you can customize it to you, put your name and logo on it, right? So it's not just for Keller Williams, it's, it's for you. And that all of those materials are there. And I will tell you, it's amazing how it will raise the level of people. There will be people who come there and listen to your investment seminar and then either they themselves or they refer somebody to sell their home through you, right? Because you have that credibility now of being a person who really operates at the high end. I just want to tell you, this is not, this is not a minor thing. And if you build an MREA business, why wouldn't you have an investor division in it? Right? Wouldn't you, why wouldn't you have a part of your business that is invest, uh, investment? And you might set up LLCs and co-invest with your clients, right? They bring the money, you bring the wisdom, and you, you're an LLC, and you're the operating, you're the managing partner, and they're getting, they're getting a great return on their money that they can't get anywhere else. Remember, the clientele that's interested in investing in real estate, really interested, that would be good to you, are not the professional investors. Stay away from them. No, stay, we say it in the book. They will try and take you out of your commission in a heartbeat. They don't respect you, they'll use you. But professional people, professional high income people who want a great return on their money, they will love you because you will give them a great return on their investment, right? Instead of them making six, three, four, five, six percent, they'll be making 10, 12, 15 percent on their money because they're doing it through you. And they, they can provide some of the capital you need to do it yourself, right? If you don't have it, that's why you could be the managing partner. So that's number four. Number five is Achieve ownership in a Keller Williams office. Agents are doing that today, even though most offices are fully owned. Often uh, an OP wants to step out or wants to have somebody else come in and they're in offering investment opportunities. I invested, I had a, an agent, Debbie Zoyce, one of our top, top agents in Las Vegas, wanted to open a Keller Williams office in 2006. What a terrible time to open an office. And, uh, but we've been profitable every month since we opened which is amazing, even during that downturn in Vegas, which is pretty outstanding. It really relates to her, not me. She's such a good OP, but she wanted me to be part of the value proposition. So I invested about $45,000, $50,000 in you know, getting it launched. I made on average 76% a year income on that investment, 76% return. I was getting $40,000 for my $50,000. How's that for a return? 
I wasn't even there. I was just visiting once a month, you know, kind of part of the value proposition, but I, I had a real job, you know, I wasn't. So my point of it is that is that can be an amazing return on your money. Just take a look for those opportunities. Ben Kinney, again, the number one agent in all of Keller Williams with $18 million of commissioned earned last year from his expansion team in the top 25 of all nations, all agents in the industry recognized by, I forget what the magazine was that recognized or the watcher that recognized him, but clearly he's probably in the top 10 or 15% of all agents in the, he, he bought over time, six Keller Williams offices. He said that, he said, in addition to my real estate production business, I want to own real estate offices. And he saw what that was. And so I'm just saying to you, if you have a wealth building mindset, look for those opportunities. And it might not just be here. Dick may know somebody that's looking for investors in some other part of the country, right? Just like I did. I was in Austin and I invested in Vegas. So, um, and then, uh, so then, but here's the big one. Here's the secret one. And that is grow a Keller Williams profit share business. And it really is a business. And let me, let me kind of, again, go back to a big picture on wealth building. It comes from Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a wonderful book on how people around you influence your look at money. And I realized I had a poor dad, right? My dad was a good, good man and he cared about his family and, you know, his kids. But, he, but when it came to money, he was a, he was a, he was a poor dad. Right. I mean, he was a factory worker and he didn't believe in ownership and he didn't trust management. And, you know, so I didn't get any kind of a picture of being a business owner or an entrepreneur. Anyway, he taught Rich Dad Poor Dad and he wrote Cash Flow Quadrant, which is a great book. And he said that you get money in your life from four directions. One is you can work for somebody or be employed, which is 90 percent of people in this country. Or you can be self-employed like we are. Right. Independent contractors, self-employed. But he said, that's not where wealth is built because you have to show up to earn your money. You have to work for the money. He said, it's the other side of the quadrants. One, own a business. And he said, owning a business means you don't work in it, but you own it. Now you may work in it for a while, but then you, your goal is you step out, you own it, they do it, right? Or investing in something where your money works for you. And he's a big believer in real estate. So what we say in Keller Williams is, Turn your self-employed job into a business. Follow the lessons of MREA. Over time, you can get and get to where Linda McKissick got. You know, you may be there as still the listing agent with an administrative staff. You may have a buyer specialist or a showing assistant. Then you may get a listing assistant where you teach them the business. And then ultimately, you, you're the CEO and the rainmaker. And then ultimately, like we taught it in MRA, you step out and become its owner. Right, you can do that, and that is now when you're up in that B quadrant. So the B quadrant has kind of an expansion, but he means where you own a business that you don't work in. And as he said, as this is Robert Kiyosaki says, you could leave it for six months, and at the end of six months, you'd come back and it would be doing as well or better than when you were there before. Right, it's that kind of idea. That's the kind of business you want to build. So anyway, or invest in real estate, other than a business. It's the greatest return on money historically ever because the real estate continually appreciates. You can buy down the debt uh, and therefore have your asset grow uh, and big opportunities for wealth building there. Or you can combine it all, right? Have a seventh level business that also serves investors. So that's, that's kind of the point of view. Now, when Gary and I were looking at this model after we had written the two books, we said, well, where does profit share show, show up? Is it a business or isn't it? Well, it's clearly on the right side, right? It's passive income. You're not working for that money. It's just coming to you. It's mailbox money every month. You're not having to do anything. You're not managing anyone. You have no liability. You have no expenses. But the system sends you money. So it's clearly on the passive income side. And what we said was it may be the purest form of passive income ever invented. Keller Williams profit share may be the purest form of passive in, uh, income because there's no uh, upfront expense, there's no liability, there's no management responsibility, and there's no risk. Amazing. So let me just show you how it works and how it's worked for me, because this is a great example. And so this is the Dave Jenks profit share company. 
I founded it 25 years ago in 1996. I have sponsored six people into Keller Williams. Isn't that brilliant? Isn't that amazing, Dick? Wow, you've been really going at it. Oh man, I just saw, I saw this opportunity and I wouldn't let it go, you know? So this is an accidental company. <laughs> I used my relationships and influence to bring six people in, that's all. But now, 25 years later, in my seven levels that I get paid on, that we, we, you get paid uh, profit share on seven levels because you, it doesn't go deeper because the opportunity has to keep going for everybody, right? Otherwise it would be a pyramid scheme and it isn't. So it only goes seven levels. I probably have maybe 12,000 agents in my, in, in my total tree. Anyway, uh, those, those agents, now listen to this. Those 1,176 agents last year averaged $200 million a month in closed business. I have a two and a half billion dollar real estate company. Dave Jenks owns a $2.5 billion a year real estate company. Okay, and it sends me profit. And it has sent me over now over 1.8, actually $1.8 million. So just passive income, I've gotten 1.8 million. Let me show you how it looks. So it starts small, it goes up to about 66,000 a year, then it dipped down to in the 30s. And now it's gotten up and in the last five years, it's averaged about $173,000 a year. Is that okay for passive income? Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, that's okay, right? I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. I love it. Funded my homeless journey around the country, you know, with my Jeep Grand Cherokee and my mountain and my uh, mountain bikes on back and my golf clubs. And Dick, I paid, played 235 different golf courses awesome. over that three years, all that all paid for by, by profit share. Interesting. So, but let's look at what it looks like. I mean, somebody like a Mike Brody, who's was for a couple of years, the number one individual profit share earner in all of Keller Williams. There's other couples where they, because couples can get two levels, like, for example, the McKissicks. So Jim and Linda McKissick, Linda came to me in 1999 and she said, Gary is having us do pro formas on other businesses that aren't the, the listing and selling of real estate. What would you recommend? And I said, how about profit share? What if you treated profit share as a business? What if you hired an assistant, built a database and focused yourself on bringing people into Keller Williams? She said, whoa. All right, because she had contacts all over the country. She started doing it. So they've sponsored in 32. Now, over 25 years, that's not a lot, is it? 25 years. And they've sponsored 32. Okay, well, they probably sponsored a few more, some that left, but still 32. They have 9,000 in their seven levels. Who knows how much they make a month? I mean, how much business that does in a month. But they have earned now, uh, actually, that was through the end of uh, 19. So they've, they're now over... Uh, 13, almost $14 million. It's interesting. Uh, uh, oh, 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 the, the lady who, I'm dropping, the lady who joined Harker, 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 Mary, Mary, there we go. I'll eventually get there. You know, my librarian's a little slow. <laughs> so uh, the uh, Mary Harker, uh, love to say she joined us. And after three years, she said, this is amazing. She said, I was with Remax. I was the poster child for Remax for 20 years. I took them from like a 3,000 person company up to a 50,000 person company. And, you know, I joined Keller Williams when it was around a 4,000 person company. Remax, and I was the poster child. She said, I was the promo, promo. You've got to come to Remax. And she said, you know how much money they paid me for that? She said, I've been with Keller Williams one year, or no, three years. And she said, you know how much I've been paid? Over a million. She said, I can't believe that. My family is getting paid for my influence. You know, my relationships, it's powerful. So anyway, Linda, same thing. She went and did that. And so what's it look like for her? Well, you see it ramped up to about, you know, uh, what's that say, 600, uh, four, yeah, 470, say thousand. Then the market dipped and oh my God, it went down to 244,000. You can barely live on that. <laughs> Don't you feel sorry for them? I mean, it almost like the bottom almost dropped out. It's a high cost of living, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's true. No, that's right. They're, they're probably spending it all, right? So the, here's the thing, though. What didn't it do? It didn't go to zero. What didn't it do? It didn't go negative. There's no way a profit share company goes bankrupt. It can't. 
the system will it'll never go to zero and it'll never go bankrupt. So that what a neat thing that is. And now it's climbed back up. And of course, you can see they've averaged over 1.4 million a year, a year in pure passive income. Amazing, right? So it's a great investment, no risk, no liability, no management responsibility. And like, by the way, like I say, it goes on forever. So for example, the Dave Jenks Profit Share Company, I set up an LLC called the Dave Jenks Legacy LLC. And now all my profit share goes into that LLC. That's all you need to do is tell Keller Williams where you want one place under your name that that money goes. Now, in the operating agreement of the LLC, it's my wife, my son, and, my, and one of my brothers. And so I get most of the money now. But in the, in, the paper, in the operating agreement of the LLC, when I die, all their percentages go up. And so I've passed that money on to them without any, it doesn't go through probate, doesn't go through anything else. And Keller Williams doesn't care. They just keep sending the money to that LLC. So it truly is an, a, an asset that goes on for life. And that's important to understand. That's not true of anybody else's model. It is not, I promise you. So that's a neat thing. Yes, Dick. And it's willable for them. Well, oh yes, no, well, they, well, they can will their, what, what, what happens in Keller Williams is you can only have one location for the money. Okay, you can't send the money to multiple locations. So I couldn't, like leave a third of it to each of my three children, right? I couldn't do that. Uh, I mean, I couldn't do that through Keller Williams. Now I can do it through me because I just give them, Keller Williams, one address, one bank account to put that money in. And then, right, yes. They, and then they it goes, they can work, that's right. And get it in a trust. Then the trust can give it to the grandkids. There you go. I mean, it, it, let me check this out. Oh, I'm sure you did. It's not a freebie. I mean, you have to do some planning for it. Yeah. It's and set up the structure, set up the legal structure, the financial legal structure, but it's all under your control. Keller Williams isn't telling you what to do. All it says is give us one bank account to send the money in that you authorize as the recipient. So anyway, so let me just kind of say to you, there's a, there, the, in addition to building a great real estate business, in addition to living on 70%, investing 30 and using real, uh, real estate as an as a opportunity, maybe building your business to the seventh level. And it doesn't, by the way, it doesn't have to be a massive seventh level. You can have a couple of admins and a, co a couple of people on it and still have it be a seventh level business. It doesn't have to be big, right? So, and it doesn't have to be at a million dollars. Now, here's the thing I would just say to you, just keep this in mind as part of your plan. It's a, Keller Williams growth is built on relationships and referrals, just like the rest of your business, okay? So build great relationships with other agents. If you meet them in other areas, other parts of the country, become curious about their business and talk with them about their business and share with them your career path and what you've learned, right? Be a, a good resource to them and then be enthusiastic about what Keller Williams has meant for you and all the great things that we've talked about today that make it this unstoppable company really dedicated to agents like nobody else and dedicated to wealth building like nobody else. We know how to run the money. And then offer to introduce them to a KW leader and people like Dick and Mike. If you know somebody in another market area, either in DFW or anywhere, because you can sponsor people anywhere, right? I was in Austin and I sponsored people in Oklahoma, uh, Massachusetts and Illinois. Those are my first three that I brought in, and then a few others. Yes. Question. So, like, maybe he's in Florida. So ask him to. So it, it can be anywhere. In yes. The yeah. So what you do? Yes, that's right. And so what you do is this. And there's people that are really masters of this, and you and Dick would be a good guide for you in this, right? Or Mike, and that is, they would guide you as to which office in that area where that person is would be the best one for them to talk to, either because of who the team leader is or the profitability. So you want to find out who that is. And then you call that team leader and say, I have a person, a friend of mine, who is very interested in Keller Williams. Can I set up an appointment? And would you make sure that they name me as the sponsor? See, that's what that is just like in referrals. When you refer a, a person to another agent, you need their agreement. They're going to pay you a referral fee, right? 
I mean, that's how referrals work. Well, the same thing is here. You need to make sure that they understand that you're the one bringing them to the table, right? Just make sure you have to be conscientious about that. So then follow up with them. You don't have to recruit. You don't have to sell Keller Williams. You can be enthusiastic about it, but you don't need to be a recruiter. We got people that are trained to do that. Okay, so that's all you're getting them to a trained person who knows how to do that. Uh, and if it's local, of course, it's going to be Jill or Mike or, or Dick here, but it could be somebody else in the Metroplex if they're in Fort Worth or something. Uh, and then follow up and then congratulate them on joining the family. Say, great, glad to have you on board. Wonderful. And then encourage them to take advantage of all of the benefits of Keller Williams training, support, as well as profit share, and then track the growth of your profit share tree. So... There's, there it is, gang. Go build your own passive income and financial wealth. You've got lots of opportunities here to do it. I hope this has been helpful. Yes. Just to give you kind of a bigger picture, right, of some things, places you can get started. Again, write me, Dave at KW.com, and I'll send you all these slides plus my top 10 books for wealth building uh, and that detailed outline of MREI. So any any so any questions right now or comments? Yes, sir. Things that you should put in there. Uh, join the growth committee. No, there you go. No, join the growth committee in your office. Thank you. Are you on that? Are you the chairman of it? But you're recruiting to it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love no. I love people. People who are really good automatically kind of want to get people involved in good things, right? For them. So yes, no. Take an active role in the local office. Because there may, you may be doing career nights, you could show up at a career night. One of the things we did in, in launching a couple of our offices, they would do uh, where that was really the beginning, they would tell the Keller Williams story one, uh, one night, uh, one afternoon a week. And then agents could bring people they knew to that session. And then, a, you know, one of the really trained people would make the presentation. Uh, but anyway, whatever the growth committee is doing, yeah, get involved in it. Yes, sir. Just wanted some clarification on the active investing leading to net worth and passive leading to cash flow. What's that look like on a daily activity? No, 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 no. I think no active active investing leads to both. Passive investing is where you just take your money and give it to somebody else, like a, a mutual fund or a savings account or a REIT, right? A real estate investment trust, something like that. So that's passive. You aren't actively involved in the management of that money. You're trusting somebody else to do it. And they're either lending it or investing it. And they're either giving you uh, a guaranteed return or some return on it. That's passive. Active is where you are directly either lending the money. Like there's hard money lenders. Once you get a big income coming in, you may have people that you can, you know, you can sell a home and you can, you can, uh, you can lend them the money for the down payment, right? With a higher interest rate or whatever. I mean, if you, you can get into personal lending, it's called hard money lending. So that's one where you're actively lending. And then the active ownership is typically in owning businesses uh, or real estate. Yeah, that's active because you're in charge of it. Now you may delegate parts of it like property management and repairs and, you know, insurance and stuff like that, but you basically are, are managing that investment. But that's the difference between active and passive. Yeah, they both lead to, they both can lead to um, cash flow and net worth. Yeah. Good. Any, any other questions? Helpful? Was it helpful? Helpful guide? Okay, clear enough? I mean, you get the, the picture? Okay. Did, were you okay with me doing that much time on the big picture of Keller Williams itself as a company? Or was that not helpful? Huh? Oh, huh? Okay. It's helpful for the new guy. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of people who really, they're in Keller Williams, they like it, they like their local office and all that, but they don't have a sense of the big picture. You know, why is it that Keller Williams is so powerful? How did it get to be number one in the world? What is the, What makes it different from other real estate companies? You know, and I want people to know that only because then you, one, you take advantage of it. And then two is you value it, right? You really understand this, this did not happen by accident. And it happened because of the dedication to the real estate agent. I mean, if there's anything underpins, and I'll just end on this with Keller Williams, I remember Somebody asked Gary Keller, and maybe it was maybe around the time we were we were writing the first book. And they said, Gary, how is it that you, the founder of a brokerage company, a franchise system, 
why do you spend so much time with agents? And he went, because the agents are the real estate business. And our whole game is to help the agents be successful. And so there it is, right? That's how we're built. All right, thank you. Thank you for being here for all.